Tonight uh, on In Focus, News from Africa Channel 405, as we continue to weigh in in the political debate currently going on on the Russia-Ukraine conflict uh, and its impact on South Africa. I'm joined now by IFP spokesperson for international affairs, Mkulego Tlengwa, as well as DA national spokesperson, Sivue Guahube. And, uh, of course, uh, the conversation also online tonight at uh, Newsroom 405 or otherwise. Uh, you can always give us a shout on WhatsApp, 072 110 Good evening to you, and uh, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and uh, joining us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus. Mkulego, you are saying the invasion, in fact, that's what you call it, is unnecessary, and it has created global terror. Uh, uh, displacement of people uh, and uh, you're saying those who are supporting this are dishonest friends and they should tell Russia that Russia uh, is wrong and um, uh, Russian uh, uh, diplomats have been responding to this question of the, the humanitarian uh, violations saying that um, where have been where have the international players been uh, while uh, the Ukraine was um, uh, going into uh, Donetsk and Lagunst uh, and uh, terrorizing millions and millions of people there. You, you had said nothing. Why are you talking now? You know what? This is a whole lot of malarkey, as one um, leader of the West has put it. Bottom line is this. Um, Ukraine is an independent sovereign state, which is entitled to self-determination and to determine its own suffrage consistent with international protocols and just basic reason of respecting territorial integrity of any nation. The aggression of Russia, of course, is not new. There's the annexation of Crimea in 2014, uh, which was you know, proof enough of a country determined um, to want to reconsolidate itself through the back door and command an authority within that part of the world. Now, it is wrong um, what um, Russia has done. And any reservations notwithstanding on their part in so far as NATO is concerned um, must, of course, be looked at, but through diplomatic channels of negotiations. You don't start a war to prevent a war. The logic is just insane and inconsistent with people who are actually concerned about safety and stability and the well-being of people. What has happened now is an invasion of a country translating into a humanitarian crisis, not only for Ukraine, um, but for the EU, um, as well having to receive the millions of refugees um, which are now flowing out um, of Ukraine, largely civilians, of course, who um, are now bearing the brutal brunt of the tyranny that Russia is meeting out on Ukraine. Having said that, of course, Europe itself must be called out for the acts of racism in the classification of refugees. That in itself is certainly inconsistent with the humanitarian assistance which um, is being afforded to Ukraine and Ukrainian um, refugees as things um, stand now. So we are calling on the South African government, um, which is clearly defining itself um, as a friend of Russia, to be honest on this matter and to tell its friend that it's wrong. That's the hallmark of friendship, the ability in difficult situations to tell your friends um, uh, that they are wrong. We are also calling for the United Nations to deploy a special envoy to mediate um, on the issues that um, actually at play. I think the final point, as far as the IFP is concerned, is that um, Russia, if it's got any concerns, they must raise them at legitimate platforms and restrain themselves from um, invading countries as a means of conflict resolution, because that only serves one purpose. It escalates um, the, you know, the, 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 the problem, and it escalates the tension and the desired effect um, which they want to have, um, certainly not one consistent uh, with conflict resolution uh, as we want it. Moreover, the world has got a lot of problems as we speak right now. We don't need to compound those problems. The energies of the United Nations and other bodies internationally really should be focusing on conflict resolution and de-escalating wars which are currently at play. So two wrongs don't make a right um, on, on this point and how Russia has characterized itself um, in this regard is inconsistent, as we have said, with all international protocols and statutes. Severo, what's your stance on uh, the response uh, by Russia and maybe some other uh, organizations as well that uh, Russia 
is uh, hugely being provoked by the U.S. and uh, the, 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 the other European uh, countries. Uh, these are players with capacity for nuclear warfare. And probably uh, saying, for example, if you look at Poland, for example, there are missiles that have been set up in Poland facing Russia. And uh, this uh, uh, possibility of an expansion uh, into Ukraine by NATO is a provocation which Russia has been calling out for eight years and no one has been listening. Thank you, uh, Tabo, and good evening to your listeners. I, I want to firstly align myself with Mukulego when he says, and outright to say, there are many things that have been wrong. And in this whole conversation, we've been hearing a lot of whataboutism. Um, a lot of people saying, what about the Israel-Palestine conflict? What about, as you say, um, what Russia uh, provocation? And all of these things really, uh, you know, the reality is that what you cannot do is you cannot make wrong, or you cannot make right with what is wrong. And this invasion, in our view, is that it is absolutely condemnable. And it is absolutely embarrassing, quite frankly, that our country and our South African government has essentially aligned itself with the actions of Russia, regardless of what, um, you know, the, the, the ties to Russia have been and the historical ties. And of course, the, the role that they play in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the fight against apartheid and the ties that they formed with South Africa, those notwithstanding, I mean, ultimately, um, you've got to be able to call out people when wrong has been done. It is absolutely embarrassing that 141 member states out of 193 in the UN General Assembly voted uh, in, to, for a motion for Russia to withdraw um, immediately from the Ukraine. And South Africa decided to sit on the fence. You would think that a country like ours that has the history that we do, that we would essentially always side, not because of historical ties, and decide to side with what is wrong, but that we would side with what is right and we would side with human rights. Ultimately, whatever issues that Russia may have with NATO and other countries and the US and the West and the like, the reality is that they are channels and war is never the solution. And so it has been deeply disappointing for us to be represented by a government that has essentially dragged 60 million South Africans into siding um, with, with, with this kind of conflict when we ultimately are saying, no, you must take a side and you must take a side of what is right. It's not that difficult to decide and to side for peace and to side with essentially human rights. And so um, I hear the whataboutism, but for me, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we, we need to also call out to say that you can't, when you are, defi when you are defending uh, a position that is reprehensible as this one, start to drag on to what about that one time that this didn't happen. Ultimately, you've got an opportunity now, and the South African government has had an opportunity now to do what is right. It's also very noteworthy, Tabo, that right at the beginning of this crisis, back in February, um, that the Durkham minister came out very strongly uh, after the, the invasion, saying that, you know, that, it, that Russia must uh, withdraw from the Ukraine. And immediately after that, there was a whole lot of confusion because then the president, uh, you know, the, uh, contradicted the minister. And then before you knew it, we had this whole situation where we weren't quite clear what South Africa's position was. And that's what brought about the debate um, in the House, because we needed to understand what is the South African government's position on this. Because we believe that the South African government is not speaking for all South Africans when it says that, you know, it will decide to remain neutral in a, a situation where human rights are being violated. We we'll continue in a moment. Mkulego Shengwa and Sivio Kwahube stayed with us uh, tonight uh, and uh, in focus continues shortly. As political parties weigh in in the Russia Ukraine conflict and the impact uh, it will have on South Africa, I'm joined uh, by IFP spokesperson for international affairs, Mkulego Shengwa, and DA national spokesperson, Sivio Kwahube. Uh, maybe to break a little bit from this conversation, Mkulego, of course, the breaking story tonight is the presidency under Section 8 of uh, the traditional and um, uh, Khoisan Leadership Act uh, acknowledging uh, uh, Prince Musuzulu as the king of uh, king elect at least of the Zulu nation. From the IFP's point of view, um, um, you, what is your response to that? Well, we congratulate um, His Majesty the King 
um, on this very important milestone that has been a very difficult journey, and we continue to reiterate our calls that unity is of paramount importance uh, within the Zulu royal family, um, so that the matters of bringing the nation together and taking the country forward um, can actually take place. And what we have seen, of course, um, have been very difficult moments since the passing of His Majesty the King King and of course the, um, the regent and so we believe now is an opportune moment um, for all of us to rally behind the royal family and his majesty the king and wish him well um, on his reign and I would also want to thank the traditional prime minister of the Zulu nation and monarch Prince Mangosu Tukteliazi for a job well done in steering the ship and rising to the occasion of being an elder within the family um, and being a voice of reason during what has been a very difficult time. Um, and so we are really uh, quite happy at the decision um, that the president has taken to fast track this matter. And um, we hope that it will um, arrive at now a logical conclusion of a settlement of cooperation and peace in the family. And we look forward um, to the coronation. But all in all, we wish um, His Majesty well um, in his reign. I can only say by it when I went to so we were from the Democratic Alliance, uh, the president has been sitting on this for a while, but following the court processes, now the presidency has taken the move. Yeah, thank you, Tabo. Um, we wish uh, him well. We wish the Zulu nation well. And uh, on our side, really, it is about really uniting um, not only the royal family, but the Zulu nation in its entirety. And so we are hoping that um, this, uh, you know, the, firstly, this congratulations and this uh, um, court case and the conclusion of it will also then mean um, that we can see some uh, some peace reigning there. Um, but uh, from the Democratic Alliance, we wish His Majesty very well in leading the Zulu nation, and we hope that he will be successful in uniting the various uh, actors um, in that uh, in the Zulu nation to make sure that there is peace indeed. Right. Uh, getting back then to our conversation tonight, Mkulego, the question of uh, the uh, relationship, uh, some calling it a solidarity brotherhood based on the fact that the uh, Soviet, uh, uh, United Soviet, uh, uh, Russian Soviet Union uh, supported South Africa militarily, politically, ideologically with resources. They uh, cut ties, for example, the diplomatic, uh, uh, di diplomatic relations are back, beg your pardon, with apartheid South Africa and so on and so forth. And this is a reason why South Africa, in this particular instance, should not pick sides. Uh, but more importantly, they should be continuing uh, their relationship uh, with, with Russia uh, and particularly that BRICS bloc. Do you believe that closer ties with, with Russia would uh, be able to rescue South Africa? Well, that's a, a very uh, morbid um, logic that would be advanced by those who um, undertake it because Ukraine has got an equal right um, to the state brotherhood having been part of the USSR. And so when they are invaded, um, we should stand in solidarity with them, particularly because we as South Africa, better than most, know the atrocities of colonialism and colonial apartheid. Um, we certainly cannot now um, sit here and say that Russia was the better player um, and that Ukraine wasn't. Ukraine was as much, much a part of the USSR as Russia was. And of course, the um, ties that have taken place after that are an indication of a world that continues um, to actually change. And therefore, Ukraine should not find itself now bullied into a corner um, by Russia who actually um, want to do something which and are doing something which nobody can dispute that it is wrong. And I think the euphemisms at play, um, calling it a military operation amongst others is wrong. This is an invasion of a sovereign state. And South Africa should be at the forefront at the very least with being a voice of reason um, to Russia through the BRICS partnerships and the so-called South-South relations which um, are currently at play. But more than that, just as a nation that comes is coming out of a brutal past, and so our solidarity must not be compromised to the conditions of historic times because 
People change, nations change. Are we now tied to Russia just because historically they were right when they are now futuristically wrong? It can't, that logic doesn't hold. We should stand on the side of the human rights that we fought for. We should stand on the side of justice and we should stand on the side of international peace. And on all three boxes there, that side means we need to stand with the people of Ukraine. And importantly, we must reiterate the call that peaceful means and um, discussions and dialogue is the name of the game as things stand right now. And the escalation of tensions through an invasion by Russia does not help the situation. So nobody should see Ukraine as a lesser um, player um, insofar as the solidarity to South Africa is concerned through the USSR. They need us now because they've been there for us as well. And of course, these are all ideological outlooks. The bottom line here is that there's a humanity um, reality we must embrace, and that reality rejects violence and war and means that people must not find themselves um, at the brutal brunt of an unnecessary and very childish act, really, of aggression by Russia when they have not exhausted all the means available to um, deal with whatever concerns they may have. So where do you find the position by uh, uh, the ANC, in particular, hypocritical? Because, um, for example, they, they have clear positions and stances that they take when it comes to the one China policy uh, against, against Taiwan, or maybe uh, if we look at the two-state uh, uh, debate around Israel and, and, and uh, uh, Palestine. Look, I don't even find it uh, hypocritical, Tabo. In my view, I find it reprehensible. Because, again, my view here is simply that, and, and, and the DA's view really, is that whether or not um, Russia was a historical ally, the reality is that you cannot hold on to what member states or what countries have done for you in the past when they go on to do what is wrong. Particularly when you come yourself as a country, you come from the history of apartheid, the history of colonialism, and so what you need to do is that your loyalty cannot be blind. You cannot offer blind loyalty to countries because they were simply there for you in dark times. Ultimately, you need to be, and I'm thinking, Kululego said this actually in the debate, where he said that you need to be, if these are your friends, you need to be able to call out your friends when they are wrong. And this blind loyalty that South Africa is lending to Russia is deeply problematic. And for me, it sends a really, really strong message that, in fact, regardless of what countries do, regardless of whether or not they, they take the wrong side in history, regardless of whether or not they trample on human rights, if for some reason they had helped and assisted South Africa in some way or another during apartheid, they will somehow, South Africa will somehow find itself booming and arming around that issue. Not to mention the fact that, again, the Ukraine, during this time, that the, the time in question, was very much part of the USSR. So this, uh, this, this alienation and choosing of one, because ultimately, Tabo, if you choose to abstain and you choose to remain neutral in, uh, in, in times of conflict like this, you are obviously, obviously choosing the side of whoever is doing this invasion. And so ultimately, for me, this, uh, the, 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 the stance by the ANC is reprehensible and is not based on principle. Because, of course, this kind of loyalty or, um, you know, our international relations can't be based on who are our friends or who, are, who is ideologically aligned to us. It has to be on principle. And when the principle is wrong or when the, and, and when a country errs on, on, on the country really defies what is basically international uh, convention, we should be able to say, well, you may have been a supporter of ours. This is not happening in another country. And so we are going to call it out. It is, for me, cowardly. And it is, for me, something that we should never, ever, ever have found ourselves in. Because we know too well when countries who in the past have remained neutral, when we were in, in, in during the days of apartheid, when we were in the throes of colonialism, the countries who remain neutral. And we should never have to subject any other country, or at least the very people of those countries yeah. um, in that kind of situation. 
Good night. The president taking the neutrality further, speaking in Cape Town uh, tonight, he's saying that he's committing to, to speaking to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Is, 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 is that a step in the right direction? Well, every step in the right direction needs to be the right step in itself. And I think that the president is certainly not genuine. We're only now reaching out to the president of Ukraine because he was called out in the debate yesterday. This should have been done a long time ago, but well, I suppose it's never um, too late. But South Africa has not defined itself as a, an honest broker um, in this matter and through which neutrality chose the side of the aggressor. In this case, that aggressor actually being um, Russia. What we are continuously expecting is that government must revert to the initial position um, by Durko, calling on Russia to pull out um, all its military operations and desist um, from its invasion out of Ukraine, and then for a conducive and enabling environment for discussions um, to actually take place. Ukraine must not be expected to negotiate with Russia when Russia has got a gun to Ukraine's head. That is an unfair playing field, and it's certainly uh, not a diplomatic environment um, either. More so, Russia cannot be a player and a referee in a conflict that it has engineered and seek to set, um, to set the terms and conditions of how and when these things should happen. They actually um, are compromising any prospects um, of a negotiation and a discussion um, which is healthy. Um, beyond that, of course, it's clear that President Putin um, was hell-bent on this invasion because despite all efforts to rationalize and reason with him with um, other world leaders, um, it did not materialize in him actually not going into um, Ukraine forging ahead um, with his invasion. And so President Ramaphosa um, in this regard actually needs to step up to the plate um, and one, call out Russia on what is wrong and that is the invasion. Um, and secondly, assure the Ukrainian people um, that we will stand on the side of that which is right. Um, the questions around NATO um, and the U.S. of course have to be answered and ventilated because there is no political structure, military structure that is static. And if um, uh, Russia or see as a threat, it must actually um, have it dealt with in the right and correct platforms. Because we need to avoid a situation um, which happened in Iraq, when Iraq was invaded under the premise and that there were weapons of mass destruction and to find that they were not there. So the fact that intelligence is actually not um, being frank and forthright about any of the prevailing risks and the default position on Russia is to engage into a war, to prevent a war, is in itself reckless and irresponsible and seeks to emulate really the behavior at some point or other of those with which whom it's in conflict now, including but not limited to the U.S. and, of course, um, Ukraine. So there are lessons to be learned from the past, and the U.S. itself has to be um, very honest um, in its engagements um, in this regard. We don't need a war. The world is coming out of COVID-19. We've been battered by um, COVID-19. We need a global effort to renew um, the international economy so that we can get people into jobs, amongst other things, and push back on poverty and unemployment. This war is a distraction, an unnecessary distraction. But beyond that, it is an explicit violation of human, uh, of human rights um, in the Ukraine. And Russia has not covered itself in any glory in how it has sought to deal with this matter. Let's leave it there for tonight because of time. I appreciate you both for coming on. Thank you very much. I'm Kulebo Shengwa, the PNC, with the Democratic Alliance.